Abraham Lincoln had hoped to start a pro-Union government in eastern North Carolina. Even after the Confederacy seceded, Lincoln thought that most of their citizens had remained loyal to the Union. However, events were to prove him wrong, as the men vying for the job of pro-Union governor of North Carolina proved to be nothing more than power-hungry swindlers. One of these men was Charles Henry Foster, a native of Murfreesboro. No sooner had the Union captured Hatteras than Foster showed up in Washington, D.C., asking Lincoln to appoint him leader of North Carolina's Unionists. Lincoln refused, and Foster returned to North Carolina to attempt to build support, organizing meetings of pro-Union citizens. Later, Foster held several tainted elections in an attempt to get himself into Congress. Failing again and again, he eventually got Lincoln's permission to raise two regiments of Union sympathizers to fight for the Union. These became known as the 1st and 2nd Regiments, North Carolina Union Volunteers. They were nicknamed the Buffaloes. Many of the men who joined the Buffaloes were genuine Union sympathizers. Many others were Confederate deserters. The presence of these men led to some captured Buffaloes being hanged as deserters, and consequently many of them ran, rather than fight when the time came. Lincoln would eventually appoint a governor for North Carolina, and that man was Edward Stanley. However, Stanley was pro-slavery and would only accept the return to the Union if North Carolina could remain a slave state. When Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation in January 1863, Stanley resigned. All in all, the federal government had greatly overestimated Union sentiment in coastal North Carolina. However, as the war dragged on the hardships on the home front increased, anti-war sentiment rose in all parts of the state. Many opposed the war because of the draft. In 1862, Zebulon V. Vance, who was from the anti-secession conservative party, was elected governor. But Vance was to continue a pro-war course of action. One prominent anti-war activist was William Holden, editor of the North Carolina Standard newspaper in Raleigh. At one point, Georgia state troops ransacked his offices in protest. In the 1864 election, Holden ran against Vance and was soundly defeated. North Carolina had three governors during the Civil War. John Ellis was governor when North Carolina seceded, but he died two months after the state left the Union. He was replaced by Henry Clark, who decided not to run in the 1862 election. Zebulon Vance, a Confederate Army officer, was elected in 1862 and again in 1864. Vance would again serve as governor in 1876 and went on to become a senator until his death in 1894. Union-occupied cities in eastern North Carolina became a magnet for escaped slaves. The Union troops put thousands of them to work building forts and unloading ships for pay. Many more slaves escaped during the Union raids on Kinston, Goldsboro and Tarboro. About 50 former slaves joined the Union Army and served as scouts, spies and guides. After Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation, the Union began to recruit black soldiers from North Carolina. Three regiments were raised, the 1st, 2nd and 3rd North Carolina Colored Volunteers. These combined with a Massachusetts regiment to form what became known as the African Brigade. In December 1863, after fighting in South Carolina, the African Brigade raided the Great Dismal Swamp. During the expedition, the African Brigade burned four camps used by Confederate guerrillas in addition to freeing 2,500 slaves and capturing supplies. By 1864, the African Brigade was absorbed into the new United States Colored Troops. But before then, the African Brigade had fought well and was the first unit of black soldiers to fight for the Union.